We today's daf is Yudtet, um, and it is the 32nd day of the Omer. And we pick up on the top of Yudtet, about six lines from the top, with two dots, non hasam. And we are dealing with the issue about the Kohen's wearing of the Begadim. The Chush Begadim lacking the, the right Begadim is, makes the Avod Pasul um, invalid. And um, the Gemara had like a whole fascinating question. It started getting into the issue right about. Um, um, about uh, how the, not the question just about Psul, well, it could be, I guess, but also the question about how the Gadim have to fit. Let's say they're too long, let's say they're too short, let's say they're the right size, but they're being held up by the belt so they don't get to the, you know, to the bottoms of, you know, they don't reach the feet, or let's say they're too long, but they're being held up so they're the right size. You know, sounds like what I do sometimes if my suits don't fit or whatever, my pants don't fit anyway. So there's all those fascinating questions about, right, whether that, about, about what counts as sort of a begot that is kasher um, for a kohen. And then we got into the whole question about the whole point that was made out of linen and, you know, three strands which are twisted and the whole sort of issue about that. Okay. Um, and now we continue, and like where exactly, you know, you put the belt, you don't put it under the uh, underarms, etc. Okay, so within that, now let's continue five lines from the top, so from the top to non hasa, top of Yutad Aleph. We caught over there. Kohen shalaka be'etzpa'o. Now this is a Shabbos halacha. A Kohen banged his, like, uh, got a scratch on his finger, he's bleeding, and, you know, you don't want to go ahead and do the avoda when you're bleeding all over the place. Not like it's puzzle, but it's, like, disgusting. Okay, anyway, so, so it's Shabbos. So you can tie a certain, like, a little band around it to stop the bleeding, essentially an, an ad hoc band-aid. You know, they only started making, like, these prepackaged band-aids, I think, what was that, after the Civil War, after World War One, or something like that? I think it was after the Civil War. Anyway, all right, so you do some bandage or whatever. The um, mitzvah, you can do it in the base of mitzvah, but not outside, because it's a Shabbos issue. And the issue is not like knotting or whatever. You, however you get it around, it's not some type of a knot or permanent or whatever. You maybe use a band or an elastic. But um, I don't know if they had elastic then. Anyway, but the problem is, is that it's a heat type of a healing, and you're not supposed to do refuah on Shabbos. You know, when you keep a wound covered, you're not only, um, you know, preventing yourself from bleeding all over the place. You know, you're helping the healing process, um, preventing an infection and so on. Okay, so therefore you are allowed to do it. It's an interesting question. Like nowadays, nobody hesitates putting on a bandage. On Shabbos, um, so that's an interesting question. We can talk, discuss it when we talk about the whole Shabbos. But anyway, here it's considered a type of a refua, but they don't have these prohibitions. Don't apply in the base on mikdash. Right? There's a general waiver for like rabbinic restrictions on Shabbos in the base on mikdash. I mean, there you are at Shabbos, you're slaughtering these animals. Okay, now that's allowed, you know, for for korban seaboard. You know, you don't you're not bringing regular korbanot, but uh, but there's a uh, once anyway. So you have already already that sort of license. And in general, we want to give greater, it's, it's a little bit ironic, right? Here it is, the holiest place in the holiest time, the Beis HaMikdash on Shabbos, you know, and we're going to give more license. But uh, to some degree, that's necessary, and it's also a function of the fact that we assume that Kohanim are going to be careful. Isn't so chatzitza, though, having a that's exactly why we're bringing it in. But the beginning of the conversation is a Shabbos one. So we're not concerned about the rabbinic issue in the Beis HaMikdash, but we are outside the Beis HaMikdash. Okay, the Mikdash of Lobinina. Im menudam, but if as you're wrapping it, you're trying to like squeeze out some blood, okay, then convocation that's a bit in either places because that's making a wound that's in this about Havala and so on. Fine. That's the teaching of our Shabbos. Now we're going to talk about the question about we mean Havala problem on Shabbos. You can't make a you can't make a wound in general. Isn't that like a general thing? They no, can no, no, yeah, no, Derek Rafua, you can. Okay, I'm gonna review this. So now we're gonna that's about the Shabbos. Now we're gonna talk about the Gadim issue. I'm gonna review the braid Rev Chia, Lowishanola Gemi. That's only if it's a like the type of like a piece of cloth. Um, aval tziltsu, I lost my place. And look at me, aval tziltsu katan have a yitra begadim. But if it's like some, like a little type of a uh, bracelet or something, you know, some type of a thing that is in itself uh, decorative or garment or whatever, I don't know who wears bracelets on their finger, uh, whatever it would be, but I don't know, I, I you know, I said, uh, who knows, maybe it uh, looks like a ring or something like that. Anyway, if it's something that's more garment-like, then it's forbidden because then you're wearing an extra garment. So he says, 
you can't wear anything on your body that would be defined as an extra garment, even though this thing here, its primary function is to prevent the bleeding and refua, but if essentially it is also a garment, you can't wear it, that's wearing extra garments, and that invalidates. You can only wear the exact garments that a Kohen is allowed to wear, which no, of course raises the questions of, besides that you wouldn't, let's say, for example, be able to wear a watch, yeah. would you be able to wear, you, uh, you know, and a ring, a, a ring mm. for us who wear wedding rings, and would you be able to wear glasses? Oh. Right? Why not? I mean, you know, there's definitely a type of a garment. The proof being that on Shabbos without an Eruv, no, on Shabbos without an Eruv, people wear glasses. I mean, okay, if you're a brisker, you don't, because, you know, mm -hmm. the briskers will say, well, that's not a garment. It's just a aid for seeing that you, that you carry on your face. Okay, but most of us, since there's, you know, the, I'm sure the multi hundred million dollar or billion dollar industry of selling cheapo, you know, one dollar frames for a hundred dollars because it's supposed to be a fashion statement, you know, whatever. So people treat glasses as a type of a, as a, a, you know, as a noy and as a garment and so on. So anyway, so according to this, it would seem you couldn't do it. They didn't have glasses in the time, eyeglasses in the time of the Gemara. Anyway, so really so, like well, let's see where the Gemara goes with this. Well, the answer about glasses is yes, or else you wouldn't be able to wear it on Shabbos. Okay, like I'm not allowed anyway, but we're going to go on for that. Uh, okay, um, I'll stop. That's what Rabbi Yochanan says. Um, I'm sorry, that's what uh, Rabbi Yudah Braid Rabbi Chia says. Lo shanu ala gemi. I will still talk about how the yitzh begadim is an extra garment. Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan says, lo amu yitzh begadim ala b'mokam begadim. No, no, no. Extra garment is only a problem where the big day kahuna are supposed to be. That part of your body can only have the big day kahuna on it. I will still lo b'mokam begadim. In a place where the big day kahuna are not supposed to, do, to be, like, you know, for like on your finger, on your face, and so on. So then, one minute, I will still lo b'mokam begadim. I will still lo have a yito. It is not considered an additional garment. Yes, what was your question? Yeah. Earrings, That's that would be another good example. Oh, it's still an earring? Well, no, 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 but just it makes... Oh, it makes that it makes sound. Sense. Yeah, an earring would be another good example. Nose rings. No nose rings for the Kohanim, okay? That would be a good question. Can a Kohen doing the abode in the base of the be wearing a nose ring? It's a maklokas amorayim. Okay, so... Um, the tape of Glaze says the Gemara, Mishum Chatzitza. So, one minute says the Gemara, according to the one that says it's not good because it's an extra garment. Why do you have to say an extra garment? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, why do you have to say an extra garment? Why don't you say that it's a problem because it's getting between. You know, you know, your hand and the avoda. We're going to learn out. It says, So if I basically am, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing a shechting, I'm carrying the, the, the bowl that has the blood, I'm sprinkling the blood. It has to directly touch my skin. Okay, it has to be itsuma with the essence of the Kohen himself. Anything I do, the avoda, I have to directly touch the bowl or the blood or the knife or whatever it is, I have to directly touch it with, with my skin. So if there's a bandage on, why isn't that bandage a problem of a chatzitza? Okay, and that would be an issue, you know, uh, that would be an issue, for example, even if it wasn't a tzilzu, even if it was a gemi, and so on. So the Gemara says, the tape of light, or if it is a tzilzu, why are you saying, because it's yitr begadim? Say it's a problem because of chatzitza. So the Gemara says, the tape of clay, mishum chatzitza. So the Gemara says, be small. No, you got your, your cut finger is your left hand, and you're doing the avoda with the right hand. So then you hand. can wear a ring then, according to that. Um, if it's not a problem of Yitra Begadim, there's two problems now, Chatzitza and Yitra Begadim. So these answers get out of the Chatzitza problem. Okay, let's finish this. It's a part of your hand that you don't do the Avoda with. Rashi says it's on the back of your hand. It's not the front of your hand. So it's only the palm of your hand that's going to, let's say, hold the bowl or something like that. So now what we have is we have two problems. A, there can't be anything between your skin and the thing you're doing, the avod, you know, the, 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 the knife, the bowl, the blood, and so on. So that just means that you have to get rid of, of, any, of any sort of chatzitza in those areas, those parts of your body. But even when we're not dealing with that, that chatzitza problem is wearing a, you know, nose ring, eyeglasses, a bandage on the back of your hand, which is not a chatzitza, is that a yitr begadim type of an issue? If it, if the thing itself is a type of a begad, not just a bandage, okay? And here, there's a debate whether the idea of yitr begadim applies to the places on the body which are not normally where the big day kahuna goes. Rabbi Yochanan says it's not a problem, and Rabbi Yehuda Braid Rabbi Chia says it is a problem. So now let's see where the Gemara continues with this. Okay, Upliga de Rava. This argues on Rava. The Amar Rava, Amar Rav Chizda, Bimokam begadim afilu nima achas chutzetes. 
שלא במקום בגדים, שלוש השלוש חוצצס, פחוס מכאן אין החוצצס. So Rava says the following, he says, Rabbi Yochanan sounds like if it's מקום בגדים, like if it was, I don't know, a bracelet or something, then it would be a problem because it's an extra baguette. Okay, right? That's what Rabbi Yochanan said. The problem of an extra baguette is the place where the coin wears to the garden. And comes along with Rav and Rav says, wait, he's reminding us of the chatzitza issue. There's a problem with the chatzitza, not just between your hand and the knife, let's say. There's a problem with the chatzitza between your arm and your tunic, between your clothes and your body. Okay, your clothes have to, it says, al bisaro. For Lavash, you know, it says, michne seibad you al bisaro. The clothes have to directly touch the skin. So therefore, what Rava says is, if you have something, I don't care if it's a bandage. I mean, according to Rava, if you had a scratch, right, and you had a bandage, even though nobody's calling it a beged, that's getting between the garment and the, and the skin, the, uh, your skin, it's supposed to be touching. If you had one loose string, that's sitting there between your garment and the skin, that's a problem. So Rabbi says, forget the idea of an extra beged. Anything where your begadim are supposed to be, that's on your skin, that's a chatzitza. So even one little string. Now, if it is not... So you know, like, if it's a little frayed, not frayed, but like, you know, like sometimes, whatever, you get like a little... You as know, long as it's still attached, you're fine. But if it actually came off, it would be a problem. Now, says Rabbi, it's like if it's... Here's in the mikvah, the nimachat. What? It's like here in the mikvah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the right, 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 the right, right, right. Yeah, it's a very, exactly, it's issues of chatzitza. Okay, and then he says, if it's shalob imakam begadim, that's it's on the back of your hand. So there Rabbi Yochanan said it would have to be, it sounded like what we were saying is it has to be something that, you know, really is a baguette, like a type, I don't know, of a bracelet or something like that. But Rav is saying, you know, three finger widths by three finger widths. That's the amount of cloth that in normal halachas of Tumatara is considered to be like, a, you know, in the category of a garment. So therefore, what Rav is saying is even if it's not functionally a garment, even if it is, you know, as long as it's a big enough piece of material, that's a problem of each of the garden. Okay, so what you've got is the following. So the anima doesn't have to be a thread from the clothes. It can actually even be like a, a hair from your head. If it fell off, right. got on your body, then that would be a That's why it's so much, it's Correct. like the mikvah. Because as long as it's attached, right. it's fine. And when it's disconnected along your back, then it's not mine. And it's okay. also called nima. Right? I don't really remember how far the, the tunic goes on his arms, but okay. All right, so here you go. So now... I've always seen it going up to like the wrist. What? I've always seen drawings that are going up to the wrist. All right, well, that's I get the wrist. Anyway, okay, so so according to Rava, okay, according to Rava, anything that is here, okay, is a problem of chatzitza, and therefore it's even a nemo. And anything that's, let's say, here, okay, that's a problem about the detour, the gudim, and that's three by three. Okay, that's what Rava says. Okay, whereas Rabbi Yochanan would say the same distinction, except here he would sort of say that it's not an issue about chatzitza. According to Rabbi Yochanan, it's an issue about yitur, the gadim, and it would sound like for him it has to be a beged. Okay, so three by three. as opposed to here he says it's got to be a nima. That's what that's if it's in this place. That in order in order to invalidate, whereas here Rabbi Yochanan would say. No problem of yitur, and it's all okay. Why is it? Right? It's not a chatzitza either. Because it's shalom b'makom b'gadim. Okay, so... Only if it's on the back of his hand? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, assuming it's not getting between his hand and the avoda. Okay, let's assume the back of the hand. Okay, so Rava says here it's a chatzitza, and Rav Yonan says here it's here it's yitur b'gadim. And here Rava says it's a problem presumably of yitur b'gadim in three by three, and Rav Yonan says, it's nothing there, and it's okay. All right, and then you had the first position. Who is the first position? Uh, Rabbi Yehuda Bray Rabbi Chia. Okay, Rabbi Yehuda Bray Rabbi Chia sounded like he also disagreed with Rabbi. He sounded like he also he said it's a problem of it is a problem of yitur, but it would go by the idea of a silk sul, right? So it sounds like he was sort of like in Rabbi's camp, except. He wanted there to be a tzitzu, whereas Rava says it's just cuddly goes by size. So it feels like a, you know, like a type of a, how do they translate it? Translate like a, a, a little bracelet. A bracelet or something. It has to be something that's a real baguette. Okay, so I should actually put him over here, okay? 
Rava says it's about Yitra Begadim, and who is it? Rabbi Chia? Raid Rava, was it? Anyway, so he also says it's about Yitra, but he says it's at Silk. Rabbi Huda, Raid the Rabbi Chia. Oh my God, okay. Okay, he says it's Tzil Tzor. All right, so you got it. You got three possible. You got you got here, and it's out here. You can either say it's not a problem at all. That's what Yochanan says. You can say it is a problem of Yitzur Begadim, defined by something that's a real, that's like functionally a real baguette or by a size. And if it's between, and this is all assuming it's not between your hand and the avoda. And if it's between your baguette and your body, Rava says even a tiny string, and Rabbi Yochanan says no, it would really have to be a different baguette. So. Whole wide range of positions. And they're only talking about the right hand. The left hand, they don't care where it is on the left hand because it's not used. Right. Uh, well, in terms of that, the other point, which I'm not addressing, which is the chatzitza between your skin and the avoda. Oh. But yeah, in my example, it's on the left hand. That was very intentional. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this, this is bothering <laughs> me about the glasses. Uh, yes. We can't say, like, it's because I don't wear glasses, we'll get, like, hit by a car. All right, like, fine. You, uh, I wear my glasses on Shabbos, soon without have an Moving on. Okay, so the most is like this. Okay. Um, okay, so now the verse says like this. The Mogam Megadim, uh, okay. The plea of the Rava, fine. Shalom Mogam Megadim, Shalom Shalom Chotzetas. Pachos Mikani in a Chotzetas. Now, by by the way, what's disturbing here, just not disturbing, but something to be alerted to, is that the use, and Rashi says this throughout the staff, the use of the word Chatzitza is sometimes imprecise. If it's talking about between your clothes and the and the and your skin, or between your skin and the like, I don't know, the blood, let's say, then the chatzitza is precise. But sometimes the word chatzitza is used to indicate this idea of yitur begadim. So when Rava says when it's three by three here, it's chotzetze. It doesn't really mean it's chotzetze. It really means it's yitur begadim. What's it being chotzetze between when it's three by three? Okay. Um, now the Gemara says like this. Um, uh, now, uh, okay. Now, this position of Rava definitely disagrees with Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan says here it's all okay. It's not a problem of Yitra B'gadim. And here Rabbi Yochanan says it's a problem. You need a real begging, not just a string. So there's a strong contrast to Rabbi Yochanan. Okay. What? The chatzitza not between him and the like, Kodesh? That also, but that's not what we're talking about. Let's assume it's like your left hand right now, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. So, Rabbi Yochanan vade pligi. Rabbi Yudah braid Rabbi Chia mi leimid pligi. So, should we say he disagrees? Because Rabbi Yudah braid Rabbi Chia says here it's got it's a tzilzul, and he says here it's three by three. They seem to be debating what constitutes a beged. So the Gemara says no. Shani tzilzul katan dechashe. No, they could agree. He could say if it's a little bracelet, even if it's small. If it's if 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 it's big, like one of two things could define it as a baguette: function or size. And it could be they're not debating. You've got it on the back of your hand or whatever your left hand. It's not where your baguette is. It's not a question of chatzitza. It's a question of an extra baguette. What defines an extra baguette? So it could be they're both giving two ways to define extra baguette. One is functionally, it's a little, it's a bracelet, even if it's small, yeah, like a ring and a ring or whatever. And the other says if it's a if it's a piece of cloth. Even if functionally it's not a baguette, if it's big enough, that the constitutes a baguette. Okay, so these are two variations of a baguette. Got it? Okay, so here he says, Rabbi Yochanan says, no yitur begadim. And this says, within yitur begadim, well, let's do it this way. Okay, this is the approach that says there's a problem of yitur begadim on that part. And, right, and, and who was it? Rava says it goes by three by three. And was it Rabbi Yehuda, whatever? Read Rabbi by yeah. Silsa. So those are two variations of how to define something as a begin on that part. And Rabbi Yochan says no problem. Okay. And here Rava says there's a chatzitza issue, and Rabbi Yochan says there's only a yitzur begadim issue. Good. Anybody got it? Okay, it'll be on the five. Let's keep on going. <laughs> so now the rest of begadim would also have to be like a three by three, right? For Rabbi Yochan over yeah. here, yeah. presumably. Okay, or some other definition, right? Okay, lishna chrina. Here's another variation of this debate. Amrila, Amar Abuda Breid Rabbi Chia Lo Ishanu La Gemi Avot Tzilto Katan Chotzeitz. That's the same thing, although here he switched to a language of Chotzeitz. Rashi makes the point that he's really again being interchangeable with Yitzur Begadim. So this is the same version, okay? That he's saying it's a Tzilto. Okay, it's only a Tzilto is going to be a problem on the hand. If Rabbi Yochanan Amar Lo Amru Chatzitza Bepachs Mishalosh Al Shalosh. Ella 
Pachos, Pachos Bikan, Enochot Ventus. So in this version, Rabbi Yochanan actually is pretty, it's basically like Rava. Rabbi Yochanan is saying, the Makam the Gadim, even less than Shalosh Shalosh. So according to this version of Rabbi Yochanan, okay, I, I don't know if I should erase the previous one, but then according to this version of Rabbi Yochanan, it's like even tiny, even tiny, less than three by three, okay? So, which is basically the same as Rava. If it's where you're begotten are, even a small thing, it's a chatzitza. But if it's not where your begotten are, now according to this version of Rabbi Yochanan, he's saying three by three, which is also the same thing as Rava. So according to this version, Rabbi Yochanan is basically saying the same thing as Rava. Okay? So b'makam begadim, less than three by three. B'makam begadim, it's more than three by, it's three by three. The only difference is, is that he is saying this as a way of disagreeing with Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi Yehuda is saying that here a little bracelet is a problem. And what Rav is really doing is Rav, I mean, what Rav Yochanan is really doing is Rav Yochanan is saying, no, Rav Yehuda, a little bracelet isn't a problem. You all, anything less than three by three is not an issue. Okay? So according to this version, Rav Yochanan is basically the same as Rava, but what the point of what he's saying is, is that a tzil is not enough. It needs to be three by three. All right, so the Gemara says the following. Um... Uh, which is effectively the same as Rava. So now we know that Reb Yochanan argues on Reb Yehuda because Reb Yehuda said Siltu. Reb Yochanan said Siltu isn't enough. You need three by three. Should we say that Rava disagrees with Reb Yehuda because Rava wasn't talking to Reb? These two ideas don't have to contradict. Like we said before, they could be different ways of defining a begging. From context, it's clear that Rabbi Yochanan rejects this way and says you need a minimum. But the Gemara is saying, should we assume that Rava also rejects that definition? And we've already answered that. The answer is no. So the Gemara says, no. Um, shani khashi. Tiltu, everybody could agree these are alternate definitions, size or something that's a real begging. Okay? Rabbi Yochanan, my gemi. Now, according to Rabbi Yochanan, why, when the Mishnah in Hilchot Shabbos was talking about that you could put a gemi on, why didn't the Mishnah say you could even put on a little bit of a, a tzilzul, like a little bracelet? For Rabbi Yochanan, that would be okay, as long as it's not three by three. And Rabbi Yochanan says anything less, according to this version, less than three by three is not a problem, of even a real beged. So why didn't the Mishnah in Shabbos use that example and tell me you could put even a real beged here um, in, or, as long because it, it was, because it was so small? So the Gemara says... No, because it's talking in a Hilchus Shabbos context. It's not talking in a, a Voda space from Mikdash context. And it wants to tell you that this type of a gemi, a bandage, actually heals. And because it heals, it's allowed in the base of Mikdash, but it's not allowed outside the base of Mikdash. Its interest was talking about bandages. Its interest wasn't, along the way, let me tell you a chiddish in Big Day Kahuna, that if you had a bracelet there, it would also be okay. It's like, all right, whatever. That's not the point. What was the point? All right, so I'm going to erase what, this what, other Rebbe Yochanan Rebbe? because it effectively is the same as the earlier Rava, but these are the basic positions, okay? Rava says a tiny string here is a problem, which one version of Rebbe Yochanan is the same, but Rebbe Yochanan says, no, if it's on where the Begadim are, you need a real Begadim. If it's not where the Begadim are, according to the old version, Rebbe Yochanan would say no problem at all. Here they're saying it would be an issue, but it has to be defined as a Begadim. What's defined as a Begadim? Either a certain size or functionally, all right? Okay, and the only thing we introduced was a version of Rabbi Yochanan, which is effectively the same as Rabbi. Yes. If the issue is healing, why would it be allowed in the bed of Mindash and out, not outside? Because what you don't it? do Rafu on Shabbos. Right, but why would they allow Rafu? That's what we said at the very beginning, that they gave a basic waiver for rabbinic restrictions on Shabbos in the base of Mikdash. Okay. All right, because there was an assumption, like I said, either that Kohanim are careful, and anyway, you're allowing all this other avoda to be done on Shabbos in the base of Mikdash, right? You know, Shvita and whatever by the Korbanot that you're bringing on Shabbos. So it's, uh, so you know, it's it's ironic because it's the holiest place and the holiest day and you're giving this license, but somehow, and the holiest people, but maybe that's why. You can trust them to keep to the right to rule and you don't have to add extra prohibitions of the rabbinic ones. Right, no, so, I, I just know, what does healing have to do with anything because you're not allowed to like the same way you're, uh, oh, it's rabbinic. It's a concern that you would come to Brian's medicine. It's like we why we don't take, you know, why we don't take medicine unless it's a, you know, unless right. people are, you know, sick in a, you know, for like a trivial type of a headache or whatever. You're not supposed to take medicine on Sabbath. Okay. Um, that's how Jesus got in trouble because he did yeah. healing on the Sabbath day. Okay. So now the Gemara says like this. Um, okay. Now. 
Well, that's the only, the only reason he got in trouble. He was violating the Rabbanu. Okay, anyway. Okay, so the Gemara says like this. Um, by Rava. Now, Rava asks. Now we're going to have some fun. Okay, what exactly constitutes a chatzitza between your garment and your, your skin? A wind came and lifted, you know, your tunic a little bit off from your leg. So it's not directly touching the skin of your leg. Okay, imagine again, it's like a toga and a tunic. It's not, you know, pants or whatever. So al bisaro ba'ina, does it have to literally be touching the skin? You don't have it. Oh, dilma derech levish v'kach. Or give me a break. There's not a chatzitza. Nobody's saying it has to literally, every single inch of your, the, the garment has to, you know, has to touch every inch of your skin. That's just the normal way of wearing. Sometimes it's a touching physically against the skin. Sometimes it's a little removed. There's a little airspace. And that's not a problem. Obviously, that's the only logical thing to say. How could you get a tunic that's so tight fitting that every that, that that's constantly up against you know the skin of all parts of the skin? Anyway, so, oh, so that's one question. Let's say you've got a little louse that's that's on your skin. Okay, welcome to the hy hygienic realities of that time. What? Neither. Neither. Oh, so yeah. Right. Exactly. If it's a dead louse, I don't have any question. It definitely is a problem. It's something you wouldn't want on your body and you would get rid of and so on. Um, uh, what's the story if it's a living louse? Do we say that it's not staying there permanently? It'll it'll go away by itself. It's moving and therefore it's just considered to be like that's where it grows. And that's essentially like Heine Revise is like it's natural, and Rashi says an interesting thing. He says like it's like it's part of your skin. Of course, if the fact is that it will go away by itself, it's stuff and not part of your skin. But anyway, it's not considered to be something that's uh, a really present and a problem of low chaiti or dilma. Even the copy the law, since obviously you don't want it there, chaiti it is a chazita. Offer Moshe Yachot. How about if you've got dirt on your on your skin? You got it, you know. So Moshe says, offer vali chaiti. What do you mean? That's definitely a chazita. Let's say it's a very fine dust or skin, you know, not a obvious dirt. What do we say? Now, how about if it's like this area right here? And again, this is a problem just of the air. So it's one thing if my tunic is against my legs and every now and then a little bit removes. It's one thing. But here, the way the garment is made, right, naturally, there's always going to be like an So what kind of question is that? I mean, you can never be different. No, so Rashi said, maybe you have to cut it so that it's tied up against, you know, and it's form fitting against the underarm. Okay, so. But that'll restrict the movement ability yeah. and their ability to do the avoda. <laughs> I so, know, right. So, okay. Some of these questions you think, like the answer has got to be it's okay, or how do they function? Wait, let me just finish it. Okay, normally if you, the derech levisha bakach, you assume that's the right answer. Okay, let's just read a couple more, and then I'll get back to you. Let's say you put your hand, you know, in here, like, you know, between your garment, it, it's the very fact that says how you no do it. I assume you only got, right, there's not like a, a thing down here, I know you have to go through like that or something. I don't know exactly how you did it, but some part of your own body is between the tunic and your skin, okay? So, gufo um, michai, does your body, is it a chatzitza against your body itself? Olo or not? So, nima ma how about if you have a string of the garment? What's the story? Now, we dealt with that before. So the Gemara says, Nima vari What do you mean? It? It's definitely a chatzitza. I mean, it's definitely a chatzitza according to like Rava here, but okay. Ela nima midudelis mahu. Let's say it's a string from the garment that's like most, that's hanging, like what Michael asked. It's still technically attached to the garment, but it's hanging. Um, now, by Marbaravati, Yatza Sa'aru Bivgadoma. Let's say you got nice long hair, you got a nice ponytail as a Kohen. Or I don't know what the case is. Because it's okay. with Pararosh, right? Isn't Pararosh anything longer than 30 days? Um, no. Um, Your hair won't get that long with more than 30 days. Mm, I don't know. I mean, you can cut your hair. What, you don't have to cut it bald. You give yourself a haircut, but even if you give yourself a haircut, if you cut it just to where it went and then it grows more, and I, I, it's a good question. I mean, you can trim it, but what doesn't mean you have to cut it back to the scalp. I don't know the answer to that. I have to look into it, but I don't think it means you can't let it grow ungroomed and uncut. No, so you keep, on, so cutting you keep it. on cutting it, but it keeps on growing. You just cut anyway. Okay, so you got a nice little ponytail going here, and it gets between your tunic and your, you know, and like your, you know, in the back and and, and your and your skin. Okay, so so yatsa sar bivgado malu sar kugufo dami. Is that like your body? Assuming that your hand wouldn't be a chatzitza, olokugu olokugufo dami. Or is it less like your body and more of a chatzitza? 
By Rav Zera. Okay, so, so wait, just pause here for a second. You got a question, Michal? No, not a question. Uh, uh, how to think about it. We were talking yesterday after the daf that, like, you know, I brought the army uniform as an example, and then David took one step up higher, double meaning to astronauts. Right. It's like the Kohanim go into a holy of holies right. place. So you wouldn't send an astronaut to space and be like, it's okay if there's a little air here and a right. little air there. It's like, right. you know, it kind of loosely fits, it's fine. Right, all right. So you'd be like, no, it's got to be very precise. Right, we right, try right. And don't understand where they're going into. Right. But if we could think, you know, send the soldiers, it wouldn't be like, oh, how about this kind of <laughs> Right, right, right. That's a good analogy. You good. Know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. My good. Bye, Rabbi Zimrit. Fill in Marsha Yachotsu. How about to fill in? Okay. Now here Rashi says the question isn't about chatzitza, I mean, should fill in, shall yad and shall ro, shall yad could be a chatzitza problem. But Rashi says the question at the stage, although the way you never know when it uses the word chatzitza, but Rashi says that basically the question is, is it an extra beged? Sort of like my question about wearing eyeglasses. Is wearing tefillin an extra beged? Let's talk about the shell roche. Okay, so Aliba the Mandamar Lila loves Mantfilini. If you are, if Lila is not the time of the mitzvah of Tfilin, so Loti Bailacha, then there's, there's no question, it's obviously an extra baguette. Beged. Even the Lila Chaiti, Yom Nami Chaiti, since at night it's an extra baguette, right? You're just, it, it doesn't count as a mitzvah or whatever. Then presumably, Rati says, since the day of Voda anyway is, is more weightier than the night of Voda, anyway, since there's times when it's considered to be just a beged, then even during the day, it's just some extra beged and it's a problem. Kidi Bailucha, what's the question? The Mandama Laila, Laila Zmant fillin. So, yes, you can always be wearing fillin and always be doing a mitzvah. So, therefore, do we say that when you're wearing it, it's like a type of a mitzvah object, or do we say it's an extra beged? Rashi says maybe because it's a mitzvah, it should be considered like to be part of your body. I don't exactly understand that. But anyway, I'll, I will frame it as, we view this as a mitzvah, or do we view this as a beged? So what do you say? My, mitzvah de gufei chayitz or lo chayitz? Is this something that it's a mitzvah? Is that considered a chatzitza, or okay, the way Rashi means it, an extra beged or non extra beged? Igagio Nilsa, so there was a transmigration of souls. No, sorry. Okay, the matter, <laughs> the matter rolled around. Um Umata Lakami Drebi Ami, and it came to Rebi Ami. Amarle, so he said, Kamud Arachubiadain, we have a long stead teaching, fill in chotzetzet. It is a problem. Maze, now you don't know, maybe that's because Lila is loved Montfilla, but okay. Maze, I'll ask you on this. So we've got a bright that teaches when the Kohanim are doing their avoda and the Levim are on their platform doing their, you know, singing and their musical instruments and the Israel are there representing the people and standing over the Korbanot. So they're Osek B'mitzvah and they don't have to daven and they don't have to wear tefillin. So the Mar says, my love, so it sounds like they're exempt but it sounds like if they were to wear tefillin, it wouldn't invalidate. My love, he mean, he it sounds like if they were to wear it, it wouldn't invalidate the avoda. It says, no, he mean, he no, I'll tell you if the coin would wear it, wear it, it would invalidate. He says the Gemara, it shouldn't say they're exempt from tefillin. Asurin me by it should have said they're not allowed to wear tefillin. Says, no. Since by the Levin Yisrael, it couldn't say they're forbidden. By the Levin Yisrael, it's just saying they're exempt. There's nothing that's forbidden for them. So couldn't say That's why it says that they're exempt, that they're exempt. But the reality is that were it going to wear it, it wouldn't just be that he's not obligated. It would actually invalidate because it would be an extra begging. So the says, one minute. We've got a chotzot. We have an explicit brighter. The brighter teaches that if they did wear it, it's not a chatzitza. So you said we have a long step teaching it is. I've got a brighter that says it isn't a chatzitza. So lo kasha, hadiyad hadarosh. Ah, difference of a tefillin shal yad shal rosh. And now basically we're saying it is a chatzitza problem. You wear the tefillin shal yad, that's a chatzitza, gets between the beged and your skin. You wear the tefillin shal rosh. We're not going to consider it an extra beged, and it's not a chatitza because it's not getting between any beged. Okay, so it sounded like initially we were saying it's an extra beged. Now we're saying it's not an extra beged; it's a chatitza, and because it's a chatitza, it's only a problem of the shoyad, not the shorosh. The Mar now my shnadiyad chesiv lavashak al b'saro shlo yedavar chatitz be no l'v'saro. So the problem of the shoyad is chatitza, not an extra beged. So the Gemara Derosh Nami Ksiv is sometimes it's Nefes Al Rosho. So one of the begotten we forgot about was the miter, was the you know the cap that the Kohen wears. So there can't be a chatzitza there either. So how are you going to get? So so how are you going to do it? So 
Gemara says no. Tana sa'ara yinir bein tzitz le mitznefes. No, because the mitznefes would not cover the whole hair. They would normally, by the Kohen Gadol, right, you'd have the tzitz, the, the gold plate on the forehead, and you'd have the mitznefet, and there'd be a little bit of, of you know, of, of hair sticking out between the two. And that's a Kohen Gadol, has a tzitz. Other Kohenim don't have a tzitz, obviously. But what it means is that the mitznefes doesn't cover the whole hair. It doesn't cover the whole skull. It ends over here. And if it ends over here, you're able to put your tefillin right over here without there being a chatzitza. Okay? Presumably, it also means in the back. You're able to get the straps in a way that they don't get in the way either. Okay. There you put the tefillin. Okay, so that's our basic answer. Tefillin is not an extra baguette. It's only a chatzitza problem. And therefore, it's only a problem by the shell rush. And with that, we're done with the discussion of extra begadim and chatzitza and so on. I thought that was a lot of fun. Now we go on to other types of things that invalidate. And the next line of the Mishnah is, Muchusar Kippurim, somebody who hasn't brought a korban uh, as part of the Tara process. We had a whole discussion about, right, Muchusar Kippurim, Dezav Kizav Damu, and, you know, Muchusar and Herif Shemesh or whatever, Tvu Yom. And so the Murray here deals with it very, very, you know, succinctly. Minolan, Amarav Huda, Amarav Chiperalea, Goin Vitahira. The Kohen should atone for her and she should become Tahor. This is, I think, about the Yoledes. So Michlal, Tahira, Michlal, she Tmeah. Until she finishes the process, she's considered Tmeah, until the final Korban is brought. And therefore, since we already learned that a Tame person invalidates the Avoda, and this is included, in, he's still considered Begavra, as we would say, in terms of her personal status as being Tmeah. Um, so therefore, it invalidates the avoda as well. Okay, so now moving on to a new point. Did they answer all those questions? No, they're open-ended questions. Open yeah. Okay. Yeah, it didn't even bother saying take It was right. just clear that they was just right. speculating that we weren't going to answer them. Okay. But shalom rachutz yadayim raglayim. Somebody who did not wash the hands and the feet that the kohen does at the beginning of the day that also invalidates. Okay. So where do you know that? Ask yachuka chuka mi mechusu We had this yesterday when you called it. Because it says by that chokat alam and so on that we and that links it to lacking begadim and lacking begadim invalidates because it says like because they're of uh, you know when they're not wearing the begadim it's like they're not kohanim so and therefore not washing hands is linked by the word chok to not wearing begadim and therefore we know it also invalidates. Okay, so now Tana Rabbanan. Now we're going to have some fun discussing this issue about what type of washing invalidates or does not invalidate. So on Yom Kippur, the Kohen Gadol would switch his clothes five times. Actually, he switched them four times. He'd wear five different, well, okay, from, let's say, his big day chol. He'd switch his clothes five times. And between each switching, he would go to the mikvah and wash his hands before and after going to the mikvah, before and after changing clothes. So ten, ten washing of hands, five going to the mikvah. If he washed his hands at the beginning of the day, but that of Yom Kippur. But then between each change of clothes, he did not do this mikvah and washing of the hands. So the halacha is that even though that's part of the avoda of the Beis HaMikdash on Yom Kippur, and the Yom says, Rachat, this Pesaro B'mayim Ulevei Sham, it even just says, it explicitly talks about going to the mikvah, you know, Rachat is Pesaro, bathing your, you know, uh, immersing your body in water and so on. Nevertheless, it does not prevent the avoda from being good. If you don't do the interim mikvahs and washing of the hands. Kohen Gadol Shelo Tav of Shelo Kiddush Ben Begad the Begad. You don't go to the mikvah wash the hands between clothes. The Avod of the Avod the Avad and you did the Avod on Yom Kippur. Avod Asak Sheyla. It's still valid. The Echad Kohen Gadol Echad Kohen Hedish Shelo Kiddush Shadav Ragol Shachris for Avad Avod Asak Sula. But if anybody Kohen Gadol or normal Kohen doesn't do the initial washing of hands and feet in the morning, that's our teaching of our Mishnah. Then the Avod is invalid. Okay, so that, that's not the Kiddush. The Kiddush is that the washings between the changes of clothes, the extra washings of Yom Kippur, does not invalidate. Um, now you say, obviously, like there's no special possible to say it invalidates, but the Gemara is going to say one minute. Our default assumption is that any parts of the Yom Kippur Avoda that aren't done invalidate, because it says Chok by Yom Kippur, Chukat Olam, or whatever, and that means that anything that you vary would invalidate. So why does this not invalidate on Yom Kippur? So the Gemara says like this. I'm only Ravasi Rabbi Yochanan. Ravasi said to Rabbi Yochanan, "Michti, let's take a look." Chamesh Tvilos Vasar Kiddush in Doraita. The going to the mikvah five times and washing the hand ten times. We understand that that's a biblical requirement. V'chukak Sivahu, and it says by Yom Kippur, it says Chok Likuva, which means that every single one, every single detail of Yom Kippur, if you don't do it, it prevents it from working, from being valid. Amar Leis Rabbi Yochanan said back. Amar Kra. The verse says. Ulevei Sham. It says, Rachatzis Pisaro Bamayim Ulevei Sham. It says, Bayom Kippur. 
you know, wash your, your skin with water, go to the mikvah and, 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 and wear the garments. So the extra fact that it repeated Ulevei Sham, because before that it said, So after this whole list of dress all these, wear this and this and this and this, it says, go to the mikvah and wear them. So why did it repeat wearing them after it just had this whole long list of everything you're supposed to wear? So he says to tell you, the repetition of Sham in the Pasuk that talks about going to the mikvah, it's, it's to tell you in this Pasuk, the only thing that prevents it from working is the wearing of the garments. The actual going of, to the mikvah between them does not prevent it from working. Okay, so the ex the repetition of the Sham said that Levisha is what matters and not the going to the mikvah. The end of Rachir Ma'ake. So Vupada, so is like his face lit up. I love that expression. Oh, that's such a brilliant read of the Pasuk. That's great. It repeats all of Sham and it right there speaks about Rechitza to tell you Rechitza isn't as important as Levisha. He loved the answer. So Rabbi Yochanan says, Amr Lei, Vava Ufsak Sivilacha. So this is some type of idiomatic expression. It means, what, did I write a letter vav for you on like a, uh, on a valley or whatever, a, uh, you know, which is like, uh, uh, it's sort of like, did I write it on a rock? Or, I, I, Rashi basically says, if you try to write something on a, how do, how do they translate it there? On a wood log. A wood log, uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, if you try to write, like uh, take some ink and a quill and try to write on a wood log, the letter's gonna be all cracked and messy or whatever. So it's some type of a way of saying like, what, you think this is a good answer? That was a lousy answer. That was. I, you know, anyway, with some weird idiomatic expression, try to write a vav. It's like, you, you know, you think I wrote for you a vav on a log? So, anyway, which means like, what? You think that was a good answer? So, vav, oops, excuse me, look at Did I write for you a vav on a log? Iachi, if that was a good answer, did safranami. So I should say that even the bathe, even the washing of the hands of the morning shouldn't be ma'ake because the pasuk is downplaying the idea of the, you know, of going to the mikvah. Of course, I don't know. No, I mean that doesn't bother me at all. The go, the washing of the hands in the morning is a general requirement of all kohanim. That clearly is ma'akev. When the pasuk here talks about rachatzis b'sroba ma'milu it's talking about the extra washings of Yom Kippur, and that's not ma'akev. You gotta feel bad, you know. Here, where Vasi was so happy and satisfied with the answer, and then Rabbi Yochanan punctured it right after he gave it, and it actually seems like a totally fine answer. Okay, but Yochanan, ah, if that was a good answer, then you shouldn't even have to do it in the morning. It wouldn't be ma'ake. So Yochi did safranami. I'm a chizki, I'm a kra. So here's how. So now we're going to learn it from a different puzzle. No, the verse says. By Salahem Chok Olam, Lo Zerolodoratam, it says this by the, in the Pusset that talks about making the Kior and, and, and washing from it in the morning. It says it will be for them an eternal edict, for him, for Aaron and his children, for all future generations. So, Dover HaMa'akev Bizaro, Ma'akev Bo. The thing that is, that applies to normal Kohanim that prevents the Avoda from being good, the first washing, that also is true by the Kohen Kazo. Dover She'enu Ma'akev Bizaro, other washings, which is never a problem by other Kohanim. Ein Ma'akev Bo is also not something that is a problem with the Kohen Gadol. So basically we learn from the fact that we know that the washing in the morning is prevents for all Kohanim. And from this post we learn that's the only thing that prevents it from working even for the Kohen Gadol. Even on Yom Kippur, the only thing that is going to, the only washing that will prevent it from being a good Avodah will be the morning washing, not the interim washings, okay? Now, okay, that's one answer. Um, Rabbi Yonasan says a similar apostle. They shall wash their hands from it. Moshe and Aaron is when Moshe was doing the avoda, you know, during the seven days of Milui. A similar drasha. So it says, Moshe Aaron Ubanav, some a washing that is necessary for his sons. Per, is necessary for Aaron. Dover she'enu ma'akev b'vanav, a washing that's not a problem for the sons, a washings on Yom Kippur, which are not relevant for the son. So ein ma'akev bo, if the Kohen misses the interim washings on Yom Kippur, it also does not prevent the avoda from working. Now, Rabbi Yonasan, my time alone, maybe the Chizkiah. Now, why did Rabbi Yonasan not say the Pasuk of Chizkiah, the Pasuk of Faisal lahem chok olam? Which, I mean, it seems like one Pasuk or the other, they're pretty much the same. So, lo'am maybe the Chizkiah, 
That's not telling you the question of ma'ake, that's just telling you for all future generations, Kohanim are supposed to be washing their hands. But it's not coming to tell you this halacha, this extra halacha, that it's only the morning washing, which is the issue. The idach, my time alone me hai, and why did uh, you know, and why did Chizkiya not say Rabbi Yonasan's Pasuk of Moshe of Aaron Ubanov? So, Vidach my time alone, my hai, me by Lil Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanina, to teach you this teaching. Dama Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanina, call Kior, Shain Bokade Lakadish Arpa Kohani Mimenu, any type of a, of a laver that is not big enough, that a laver, anyway, for four Kohani to use it at the same time, okay. Um, a Mekachim boat is not legitimate for use. Shenemar v'achatsumi menu Moshe v'Aaron u'Banav. So since those are four people, you have to be big enough for four Kohanim to use it simultaneously. Okay, fine. Anyway, we learned that it's only the morning that is Ma'akev, not the ones of Yom Kippur. Rabbi Yochanan gave a great pasuk, the repetition of Ulu Sham, which downplays the interim washings. And then for some reason he punctured it. So then we went ahead and we learned it from these other psukim. There's only the things that are, only the washings that are Ma'akev for the regular Kohanim. Yes. Why, why aren't they suggesting perhaps that because the Kohen's going to go into the Kohen who goes going to go into the Holy of Holies that he needs those extra? That's all preparation for that special. That would be what we would have assumed, and also the use of the word chok would have assumed that everything is required, which is why we need an extra puzzle to teach me that it's not the case. Okay, now the same way. Once we finish discussing that. Not wearing the big dekuna invalidates. We had an opportunity to discuss how the big dekuna had to be worn. Now that we say not washing your hands invalidates, we have an opportunity to discuss how you're supposed to wash your hands. Tanur Banan, Ketza Mitzis Kiddush, how do you wash the hands and the feet? Meniach Yado Yemenitz, Agabi Raylo Yemenitz, okay, like that, okay? And similarly, the Yado Asmalit, Agabi Raglo Asmalit, you're this at the same time, like that. Okay, you do your morning exercises. I know, do your morning exercises. I got, but my back hurt just doing that. I really need to go back to the kitchen. Anyway, and you wash it. Now, I got to tell you, um, like, you know, you can't be the one that's directly operating, that doing the pouring, right? Because you got your hands and your legs together, whatever, you know? So, um, but anyway, that's where you are when the, uh, um, so, uh, you know, when, when, when the, for the Kiddusha diet. Um, I actually want to see. I didn't get a chance to check. Let me just quickly look at the Rambam on this. But um, about how he describes how it actually would get when it came to the pouring. You bend down on the Kadesh. Okay. What are you doing, Zayi? Like, are you jumping into the cure? Who's pouring you? I don't exactly get it. Uh, not exactly getting. Is I mean, it a regen or cuff regen? What? Like cuff regen or regen? Um, no. no, I mean. I assume it meant more your feet. I have to look into this more. Um, but anyway, but um, but I don't really get. I don't really get this because it's not. I mean, we when we go out to wash the hands for the what do you call? It? We have the kohanim doing it, but they really didn't have the kohanim doing it. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. We have the levim doing it, but they didn't have the levim doing it. Maybe you had a fellow kohen doing it. I don't know. Did you jump into it? Was it like a basin at the bottom? Do they have anything in the notes that's describing it? All right, anyway, let's keep on going. Okay, um, now, I'm a lot of so now. Just uh, turns on one of the forfeits and uh, sacrifice both simultaneously. That's what it's like. He turns it on while he's got his hands like that or beforehand. Oh. Okay. I mean, it's got to be. It's like, you know, when you go to the beach and they've got this thing, you know, pulled down or whatever, <laughs> right. it's got to be somehow you could be down this and have running water and somehow get under the running water or something like that. Okay, I, but I, it would be helpful if there was a greater description of how that exactly operated. Okay, now. But he does, he does give reference to Rambam. Which Rambam? At 516. I was looking at 516. Yeah. I didn't see anything there about a running faucet. And, uh, um, commentary to the Mishnah. Okay. Yeah, all right, I'll look later. I didn't see anything there about a, a running okay. faucet. Anyway, okay. Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda, Omer, Miniach, Shtei Adaba, Zua Gabzu, you do this. Shtei Raglav, Zua Gabzu. Um, and umikadesh. So you got your like two feet on top and your two hands on top. So rather than hand foot, hand foot, it's like like this and like that. Okay. And they said, so 
Amrilo um, hiflakta. They said you're getting a little carried away, which basically means like, how can a Kohen maintain stability standing like one foot on top of the other? Ef shar, ef shalasos king. You really can't do it. Shop your kamule. That's a good response. I'm Rav Yosef v'chaveiro misayo. No, what it means is you get your fellow Kohen to help support you, so you don't tip over while you're standing like that. My minai, what are they debating? I'm Rabbi Amina Minatzadi Kabenayu. Can you have supported standing? Is that considered halachically to be standing? Because even when you wa wash your hands and feed, halachically, you can't do it sitting, you have to do it standing. I'm going to have some a braid of Ashilavina, but they save me, civil Kadesh. Why can't you sit when you wash your hands? I'm a cra, lisharate. It says, la mod lisharate, to stand to serve. Vesheris umadu. Okay, it says, la mod lisharate, another pasuk. And as it says, when it speaks about the, the washing of the hands, it says, vesheirate. So therefore, and we know in general that sheiris service is standing, as John Milton said. They also they also serve who only stand and wait. So <laughs> so anyway, so service is standing, and um, therefore, since this is considered sheirut, part of the service of the Beit Hamikdash, it has to be done standing. Interesting little tosfos. If you look at tosfos, amida minatzadi kibinayu. It says lorabanan lo shmei amida minatzad. It's not considered doing standing. Venira kishikarin b'torah shelo lismoch. When you get an aliyah. Don't like, you know, support yourself on the bima. Try to stand up by yourself. You have to stand when you're getting an aliyah. The same that Torah was given, you have to be in a sense of awe, standing when you're reading the Torah or getting an aliyah. Of course, people that are in, you know, wheelchairs or otherwise can't, obviously, you know, this is not ma'ake. But this is more of like a v'lechatchila in terms of the issues of the Iliad. Back to the Gemara. Tana Rabbanan, kidesh shadav ragla biyom, ain't tarch l'kadish b'layza. When you have to rewash your hands, if you are doing the night shift in the base of Mikdash, you did it the day, and now you're working into the night, just because it's night, you don't have to wash your hands again. But Lila, if you worked at the night, and now you're going over into the morning and continuing to do the avoda after daybreak, so tzarech l'kadish biyom, divrei Rebbe. Rebbe says the new day requires a new washing of hands. Shaya Rebbe Omer, Lina Mo'elet B'Kiddush Adam Raglayim. Mo'elet, we normally think is a good thing. Sleeping works for Kiddush Adam Raglayim, but works means works to make it required. Okay, the fact that it's been slept, even if you didn't sleep, sleeping is the, the word Lina means, it's been, the night has passed, and it's now the next morning. The passing of the night requires a new washing of hands. No, it has no impact. As long as you didn't leave the base of Mikdash, your original washing is still good. There you were. Not only were you in the base of Mikdash, you were doing avoda. You were putting the limbs on the sacrifice the whole night. And then it's daybreak, and you still are in the middle of putting the limbs on the sacrifice. You've got a lot to do. Rebbe says the same thing. You've got to wash your hands again. Divrei Rebbe. Since you did it before you began the avoda of putting the limbs on, as long as you don't have like a hesachadas and you don't leave the base of mikdash, as long as you're doing it, you're sort of constantly involved in this. So, you don't have to do it again. So, it seems like it's the same debate, a slightly different scenario. I says, Tricha, you need to tell me both cases, they're slightly different. He asked me, and it said the first one, the first one did not. Describe the case that you were in the middle, were doing the avoda the whole night and going on and continuing the avoda in the morning. So in that case, but he come a rebbe. There I would say rebbe requires in the morning a new washing. The pasuk leim avoda la avoda. I would assume this. I would assume the scenario is come the morning they put you on some different work job. So even though you didn't leave the base of mikdash, maybe the combination of the new day and a new avoda requires washing the hands. Of a Baha, here where it's you're still doing the avoda you were doing at the night. It's the same process. The low pasikle, you didn't interrupt. Maybe we'd agree you don't have to do a kiddush adam baglayim. So it tells you, no, you do, even though it was the same avoda, the same process. Once it's daybreak, you need to do it. Rebbe Shimon, the Yashmin and Baha, if we had just given me that example, Baha Kamar Rebbe Leather Rebbe Shimon, maybe I would say because it's the same Avoda, Rebbe Leather Rebbe Shimon doesn't require a new washing. Avo Baha, if there actually was a, a, a new Avoda, wasn't the same one, a new Avoda with the new day, 
Ema Modi Le Rebbe, maybe we'd agree. Tzrichi, so Tzrichas. You need to tell me both ways. Rebbe says you always need to do a washing if the new day breaks, even if you're in the middle of an avoda. And Rebbe Lezer Shimon says you never need to do it as long as you didn't leave and there wasn't, you weren't distracted or whatever. Even if you shift from one avoda to the next, the new day does not require a new washing. Okay, now let's link it to the Pasuk. My time at the Rebbe, where does Rebbe get the idea that a new day requires a new washing? Dechsev, Bigishtam. It says, you know, Bevo'am el or mo'ed l'sharet, Bevo'am el mo'ed, or Bigishtam el mizbech l'sharet. When do they have to wash their hands? When they enter into or mo'ed, or when they draw close to the mizbech? So what is Bigishtam telling you? So Rashi, some, I mean, it a little bit begs the question. Rashi says that the fact that it's a new day defines this, even though it's not a new biyah, it's not a new entering into the mikdash, I'm still in the mikdash, it's a new encounter, it's a new gisha. Now that a little bit begs the question, like who defined a new day as a new gisha, okay? But if Rashi says, if you look three lines down in the wide line, to see the gisha the gisha de shacharit gisha shmitihi, shariyish kan ma'aracha chadasha. Since there's a new fire, new wood is put on the base on the Mizbeach, and it says El Hamizbeach, so it's seen as a new encounter of the Mizbeach, because you did something new. You refresh the altar by putting the new wood on it. So it's a new gisha. So Rabbi says it's a new gisha, the altar has been refreshed, and therefore you need a new washing. My time at Rebbe Lezbrib Shimon Tirsiv Bivoam. No, because the other the other part of the puzzle says when you enter. And this was not a new entry into the Beis HaMikdash. The Edach, now Rebbe would say back, Nami Haksi Bevoam. So he would say, Iksi Bikishkan Velo Ksi Bevoam. But it only said when you encounter and not when you enter. Havamina called Gisha Vigisha. I might think that every time you go back to the Mizbeach in the same day, you have to do it a hundred times. Every time you re encounter the altar. So Kazarachman Bevoam. So Bevoam is telling you, no, we don't mean every time you encounter the altar. We mean in one presence in the Mikdash. You've entered the Mikdash, you're there for the day, you do it once. So Bivoam tells you, once you've entered and you're there for the day, you don't do it for every new encounter of the altar. Yikishtam says, but when there's something new about the altar, when it's been daybreak and the altar's refreshed, then you do have to do it even if you never left. That's what Rabbi says. Okay, the Yidach Nam Yachsi Bikishtam. Now, Rabbi Lezer Shimon that says, as long as you didn't leave, you don't have to wash your hands again. What does he do with the word bikishtam? Just tell me bivoam. When you come in again, if you've if you've been there constantly, you don't have to do it. No, iksi bivoam veloksi bikishtam. Had it just said bivoam, have you mina filo abia rekanit? Even if you entered in without for the purpose of avoda, anytime you enter, maybe you have to do it. So gisham tells you only if you enter to do an avoda. The man says one minute. You can't say that. It says, Okay, I think it says Lisharet. I mean, Lisharet does say Bikisham or Bivoam. Anyway, we understand that Lisharet refers to Bivoam. So therefore, I, with, even without the word Gishtam, I would have known that it means only when you enter to do an Avoda. Elephant. Bivoam means when you enter to do an Avoda. So what do you need Bikisham for? For Rebbe, you need Bikisham to tell me that every new day you got to do it again. What do you do with the big Yishtam for Rebbe Lezberg Shimon? The Yishtam Yibayele, the Kid Rav Acha Breid Bar Yaakov. The Amar Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, HaKomo Modi Bikidu Sheni Kishu Lavush Mikadesh. Okay, when there's a whole debate when the Kohen Gadol switches Begadim, when do you wash your hands? Before you take off the old Begadim or after you take off the old Begadim? Okay, so, but that's a debate. Then you go to the Mikvah, then you put on the Begadim, and here we're saying that whatever the debate was about when you took off the old ones, Everybody agrees that when you put on the new begadim, you first put on the new begadim and then you wash your hands. You don't wash your hands before the new begadim. Why does everybody agree first the new begadim and then wash your hands? Damakra o vigishtam mi sheinu mechuser el gisha bilvad yatzeh shemechuser levisha vigisha because the washing of the hands has to be juxtaposed with gishtam with entering in and beginning the avoda. And if you wash your hands before you put on the begadim, it would not be the washing right before you encountered, because you'd have to then put on the begadim. So you have to have the begadim on, be, be ready, and the only thing that's preventing you is the washing of your hands. You wash your hands, and now begin come. Okay, so what do you have? The Vaham tells you, everybody agrees, that once you enter and you're present, you don't have to do it multiple times. Rebbe Lezer Rebbe Shimon says that all that tells me is, until you leave, you never have to wash your hands again. 
Rebbe says, no, the Ishtam tells me if it's considered a new encounter because it's a new day, then even without leaving, you have to wash your hands. And Rebbe Lezer Reb Shimon says, what I learned from the Ishtam is this halacha that you wash your hands after putting on the begadim, that it comes right before you encounter. I do not learn what you Rebbe said, that a new day requires a new washing. I say as long as you're present and haven't left, you don't have to wash your hands again. Okay, interesting debates. Let's say somebody's up all night learning, but they have to wash their hands in the morning and make a bra or whatever they're up all night. You know, it's an interesting similar debate. It's debated in the post game. You have to wash your hands first thing in the morning if you've been up all night. Okay, so sort of interesting type of a parallel question. Okay, we'll end with this. Bye -bye.